What's going on? Today we're doing Splunk 101, which is a room from Try Hack Me. The room is part of the Cyber Defense Pathway, or the Blue Team Pathway, I would like to call it. And this room is only the basics of Splunk. Of course, after we finish this room, we're gonna go to... Uh, there is another part of this room, Splunk 101, and you got also Splunk 2. And also there are a couple of uh, Splunk rooms in Try Hack Me in which we will uh, go through the practical scenarios to uh, investigate events and analyze incidents. But for now we will do the Splunk 101, which is only the basics. So this room is for those who have not worked uh, on Splunk before or would like to get a basic idea about Splunk before getting started. So we click on the room and don't forget to deploy the machine by clicking on the start the machine. Okay, so through answering the questions in this challenge, I'm not going to call it challenge, in this room, uh, you will be able to form a basic idea of how Splunk works. So let's head to the virtual machine here and access Splunk by typing the localhost IP and the port 8000. Once you hit that, you will be able to uh, log in to the interface and um, be presented with the Splunk, uh, Splunk dashboard. So let's see here the task. So task two is about navigating Splunk. So the questions here, there are no questions to answer. I'm going to explain these in a while. Splunk apps. Okay, so for Splunk apps, we got two questions. Before answering the questions, let me give you a, a basic walkthrough on the interface here. So as you can see, we have, this is the dashboard, and we have the Splunk bar here. The Splunk bar contains uh, the messages section. You will get the system level messages uh, here. The settings, the settings is a drop down menu which contains various options and settings related to the uh, Splunk. So basically here you see the knowledge, uh, data if you want to input data, options to the administration of the Splunk interface and the system settings, the ports, the controls, and here the monetary council. If you click on that, you will be redirected to the monetary council where you will see, uh, okay, here you will see the uh, metrics related to the Splunk usage and the version of Splunk, the environments, and other details. Now, you will be interested in investigating more if you are if you, in these uh, metrics if you are changing the Splunk installation from machine to machine. So basically here, uh, it gives me information about uh, how Splunk is doing on the current machine. So for example, as you can see, the CPU usage here is 45%, uh, which is quite high. Uh, as you can see here, the memory usage, not too much, 18%. And here is the indexing rate. Okay. And you can click also, you can go through the uh, tabs here. If you go to summary, so depending on your uh, machine specs, uh, the speed at which the settings uh, is going to vary, of course. So. Okay, we're not gonna be we're not gonna be uh, giving this too much details. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get, uh, go back. So what's important for us here is the uh, dashboard, home dashboard. So in Splunk, you will be working with data mostly. So you will be adding data. Okay, and here Splunk apps are kind of extensions added to Splunk to expand on its capabilities. So, for example, on the left, you can see the applications. The default application is search and reporting, and here you can find more applications by clicking on that. You'll be able to install more apps to Splunk to expand and broaden its capabilities. Let me go back. I'm not going to wait for this. We're going to be working with apps in this video. Uh, that's why I skipped this. Uh, if you click on the gear icon here, you will be able to customize the settings for the apps. And be informed that whenever you install an app or load it manually, you have to relaunch Splunk. 
So for example, these are the current applications in the current installation of Splunk. You will see here the name of the app, the folder name, the version, and there is an update, of course, the permissions, and here the status of it. You can disable or enable the applications by clicking on the, step, the status or from the status tab here. The actions, you can edit the properties. For example, here, Splunk Light Forwarder. If you click on uh, properties, you will be able to see the details of this app, like the name, if you want to auto check on the updates, if it's visible to users, and if you want to, if you have uh, the application files and you would like to upgrade manually, you can just add here. Okay, let's go back. So, so mostly here, uh, that's one way of adding the applications. Another way of adding the apps is by uploading the application itself. So if you got the uh, file of the app, you can upload it manually, which we will be doing in this tutorial. So if you go to uh, Splunk Apps, So here, if you want to browse for more applications, if you want to add them from the uh, store, but uh, we will be doing that manually. So I'm going to head to settings. I uh, know, head to find more apps. And here we see manage the apps. So from the option here, you can see an install for app from file. You click on that, you browse the file. So this is an add-on uh, to Splunk from Microsoft to monitor and report on Sysmon events or System Monitor. And if you have followed my walkthrough uh, in the previous videos, I will a presented walkthrough for a system monitor how to work on system monitor and how to use that to filter through events so if you haven't watched the video i encourage you to watch the video before uh, starting with splunk so if you check the list here you can see the application has been added this is the name and this is the folder name the folder name is the folder name in the uh, splunk directory if you go to uh, the an installation path of splunk go to c program files and check Splunk. And after Splunk, you check your and on bin uh, scripts. No, not here. The last time I checked, it was on etc. Let me check on etc. So apps. And here you see the applications. You can you can just if you ha if you want to add them manually, as I said earlier, we can extract the folder and drag the, the directory of the application here to this uh, path and then restart the Splunk service. So, let's see what Roy Hackme has got for us. What is the folder name of the add-on? As you can see, it is TA Microsoft Sysmon and the version is 10.6.2, as demonstrated or shown here. This is the folder name and this is the version. Now, this is for the applications and how to add them to Splunk. You will need to add applications uh, later, uh, especially when you work more with Splunk, if you want to add more uh, features and expand its functionality, you will need to add applications. So, Splunk Apps, adding data. Now, this is the part where Splunk is dedicated to, uh, or this is the part where you will work, the, where you work will be the most. So for example, here the question is, make sure you upload the data once. So here, we are given a file this is the uh, file called tutorial data. If let's let's explore this uh, file a bit before uploading the uh, data. So you get familiar with the data before you add it to the Splunk. So the data here are web server logs. So as you can see, dub, 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 one, two, three. If you click on them, you see we have logs. And if you click on mail server, let's click on that, see what, what is this. So these are the, yeah, so the logs actually for the SSH server, as I can see from uh, the logs. So these logs, 
are generated by your SSH and web server. If you want to add the logs to Splunk, you will have to extract them from the web server and the mail server and upload them to Splunk. Now, why do we need to upload? Why, why we upload data to Splunk? Uh, it's not only for threat hunting, incident response, but also for uh, data analysis, developer operations. But in the case of this scenario, we are uploading data to analyze the logs. So if you have got logs from everywhere, uh, you have to, if you want to visualize the logs, work with the logs in one central place, you want to use Splunk to facilitate the process of uh, responding to incidents or investigating events. So one way to add data is by uploading data manually. Of course, there are various ways to add data to Splunk, but in this, in this uh, video, we will be adding the data using the upload function from here. Uh, the uh, yeah the upload. You can also add data using the monitor. If you uh, install Splunk on a specific machine and you want to monitor the logs of this machine, you can just click on monitor. Or if you got um, logs coming from everywhere, you can select the forward. So the logs will be aggregated in Splunk and you'll be able to investigate them in one place. So let's click on upload. Select the file. Make sure to select the compressed file here. Next. Okay. Leave the settings uh, as they are. Review. Submit. Now the data are, is being uploaded, and here you're given the option to explore the data once it is finished. Uh, as you can see, you can start searching, but before searching, we're gonna head back to the homepage, and we will be monitoring the Microsoft system monitor logs on this machine. So we click on add data, and we go to monitor, So here we have the option to monitor various logs, but only on this machine. Uh, let me select, uh, you can also add the data from, from this menu. You can select data and data inputs. I'm gonna select lock, local event log collection. Scroll down until you find Microsoft Windows System Monitor Operational. Make sure it is added and click on Save. Okay, now let's explore the logs. Search and reporting. Now here you can, uh, let me go to, okay, so here you have the filter to choose the date. So for me, I'm going to select all time. So let's see here the number of events that are generated by the data we have just uploaded. Make sure to let the, let Splunk processes, process the uh, data, as you can see, until it finishes. So you'll see the total number of events here so it has finished and as you can see the total number of events that have been generated or uh, processed by splunk is 109864 now you take the number and answer with this or the task this one so task five now is about splunk queries now if you see the questions here in order to answer these questions you have to uh, perform some queries and find or extract the data from the results. So basically here, before I dig into the questions, let me give you basics about the queries. So basically, this, is, this bar here is the search bar. You use the search bar for searching through the queries. So as you can see, every query starts with source, and then you have host. Uh, so basically, these fields can be selected from the pane on the left. As you can see, this pane here, whenever you click for it, let me, let me remove this one. Okay, 
So if you click on host, you have the option to add this to the search. So here it is selected. If you click on no, it will be hidden, right? If you click on all fields, we can see breakdown or rundown of all of the fields that we can search with. So as you can see, we have source, source type. We can enable some of the uh, other fields if you want to search with, uh, with them. So hide fields, I can hide them. I can also sh show them. All right. So click on a little bit more fields here. See what we have. So we have un we have disabled one field, which is the host. We can also enable it back by checking the box here. And as you can see, it will be added back. Now if I click on X, I will see the host field here. Click on that. And you see the values are this one. So this is the value of the host that is uh, uh, related to the machine that from which we have generated the logs. If you click on that, you can add the uh, source or you can add it to the query here. As you can see, the host has been added to the query. Uh, I'm not sure why we have two. So let me move this one. So this query will search through the file we have added and filter for the host name, which is marked by uh, this name here, when something between the, uh, the uh, double quotes. So we see here the logs. If you want to expand through a specific log, we can click on the arrow here and you can see the details of the log, like the host, the source, the source I type. And these fields are taken directly from the log file. So depending on the log file and the format of the log file, the fields here will be different for each log file. Uh, as you can see, we can also, if you want to filter for a specific val one value of, of these values, you can click on the value, for example. Let's see if you want to filter for the um, let's see here Splunk server in the I'm not gonna choose this one let me remove the query here and select source I'm gonna search through the secure log for www2 as you can see it will be added to the query all right let's check out this one Source type, source. Uh, let me. Okay, remove this one. If we put star here, it will look through all of the logs, regardless of the source. So all of the logs, uh, all the time, okay, it will look through all the logs if you type star. Click on search. Of course, the number will be high, so give it some time to finish. So if we take a look at the first one, we see it is system monitor event, right? And as you can see, this is the source type, indicates from where it has pulled the entry. And as you can see the name here, the process ID, the thread ID, the user ID. Now, if you want to, if you want to, uh, search for a specific process id you can click on the value of course and you can select add to search if we add this to search a new query will be formed this new query will filter through the logs and displaying only the logs that have the process id 2180 so that's basically how the uh, uh that's how it works that's how you search through the logs so you have the search bar in the search bar, you, you select or you form the query, and by looking at the logs, you can form additional queries just by uh, expanding the logs and selecting keywords to add to the uh, search bar or from the fields from here. You can uh, rely on the fields to filter through the logs. For example, if I delete this one and select, for example, and we hear the interesting fields I have. Uh, if you want to look through 
hashes, for example. You can, if you want to look through the logs for this specific hash, you can click on the hash. As you can see, the Splunk will filter through the logs and finding you the entries that will, that contain the SSH or the SHA1 hash. You can also delete the process ID and let it look through only this value. So let's see here how many logs will be pulled. So we got 771 events. Okay, let's go back now to try hacking. Now use Splunk to search for the phrase failed password using tutorial zip as a source. So we have a phrase here. So we take the phrase and we go back. How do we filter with a specific phrase? What we do here, we type uh, double quotes and the phrase. Of course, don't forget to add the star to search through all the locks. Search. Okay, so we have 33,253 events. The question is, what is the source type? So if you click on the source type here, as you can see, the source type is www.secure, which means that the failed password or the failed password attempt or the failed password the phrase has uh, shown up in the www slash secure log file in our data, which is the answer. In the search result, look at the patterns tab. What is the last name? What is the last username in this tab? And okay, so if you click on the patterns, we see here the usernames that uh, have been used in the failed uh, login attempt. So we have app server, we have roots, and we have myuan which is the answer. So use the pattern uh, tab here if you want to look, to look through specific patterns depending on the query. For example, here I'm using failed passwords. So the patterns of this uh, phrase um, are uh, failed login attempts, right? So depending on the query, the patterns will follow. Search for the field password or search for failed password events for this specific username. How many events are returned? So you have to find out how many times the username myuan uh, has triggered failed password events. So in order to do that, let's search for the phrase failed password for username, copy that, go to events and replace failed password with this specific phrase. And we search, see how many events have been generated. So we got only 16. So this is the answer for 16. Now, before going to Sigma rules, visualizations and alerts, uh, make sure, uh, make sure, not make sure, uh, be informed that the most important functionality of Splunk is how to use the queries. So take your time and play with the uh, fields, play with the uh, queries, try to construct a new queries based on the results you get. For example, here, if I uh, cancel this one and search through all the events. You can play with the queries by looking at the events, for example, here, and construct new queries just by taking a look at the events. For example, this event is about uh, this is this monitor event, um, process ID 2180, and this is the user ID. So if I want to see the events, for this user ID, I can click on that and add to search. So this will search for all of the events related to that user ID. If you want to investigate specific user ID, uh, what are the events they have generated? Uh, you don't need to memorize the user SID or you don't need to memorize the query. You can just extract the query from the events or from the logs. Okay, so Sigma rules. In a nutshell, Sigma rules uh, are rules to convert or to convert queries from Splunk uh, or different uh, SIM devices or applications into a universal, unified uh, formula that can be used by the threat intelligence community. So if you take a look at the GitHub repository here of Sigma, Sigma HQ, Sigma 
So by definition, it is a generic and open signature format that allows you to describe relevant log events in a straightforward manner. So Sigma, it, it, it is not different from Splunk queries or other uh, SIAM uh, softwares. It is only a format. So why do we use Sigma? We use Sigma to, th to share rules or to share queries among the threat intelligence community. So if you go to the repository here and you click on rules, you see rules for each category. So if I want rules for Windows, I can go to Windows, go to click on malware, and I see the malware, I see malware rules here. So for example, antivirus exploiting. This is the Sigma formula format, right? If you want to convert this to Splunk or based on your product that you're using for threat hunting or event management, you can use the uncoder.io, paste the Splunk forma, format and select your product here. For example, in our case, we're using Splunk. If you have another product, you can select from the list and select on translate. Now this is the query that you can use in the Splunk search bar, right? All right. So, the questions now. Here the select document feature, what is the Splunk query for Sigma APT29? So this Sigma APT29, uh, let me oh, circle back to, okay, so we can use this. If you don't know what is the Sigma format uh, for a rule, you can select from the, or use the select document functionality here. There are multiple Sigma queries here, you can use them, or you can search through the queries by, if you have something in your mind. For example, in the question, we want to form a Splunk query for the Advanced Persistent Group 29. So we can also, in order to find that, in order to find the query, we can look in the Sigma queries and find an equivalent for Splunk. For example, ABC 29. So this is the Splunk, uh, this is the Sigma query for APT29. As per the description, this method detects a suspicious PowerShell command. Line combination as used by APT29 in a campaign against US think tanks. And this is the reference. You can uh, go click on Splunk, translate, and this is your Splunk query. So you suspect that the logs that have been generated or the events that have been generated by the machine you're mounting or machine you're investigating contain um, incidents of uh, or footprints of APT29, you can use this query to search your logs. So let's see here if we have. We don't have. Yeah, okay. But this is your answer. Use the GitHub Sigma repository. What is the Splunk query for? to a storage remote thread creation. So sometimes uh, you won't be able to find your Sigma query from the select document. So you have to go to the Git repo and find that. So in our case, we require to find the create remote thread, cre uh, remote thread creation. So if you don't know where it could be, you can copy that and go to Windows. Of course it is Windows because it's thread creation and uh, from the question here, we can we can just know where to look actually. So from the name, it is a remote thread creation, which means that we have to look at Windows. Once we are in Windows, we can search for that, and we have one result in this repository. Click on that, and this is the create remote thread uh, sigma rule. We can copy that and go back to the encoder. Translate to Splunk, and this is the query. No, translate. Something went wrong. Let me refresh the page. Splunk, translate. Anyway, it's not working, but in your case, try it, and this is your answer. Okay, dashboards and visualizations. So in case you want to create some kind of reports, or you want to create some active visualizations for a high-level overview, high-level uh, examination you can uh, just go to or use the dashboards so in the dashboard section here you can create a dashboard create a new 
name it TSM dashboard create you can select to make it dark save refresh now we have created the first dashboard now you can import visualizations and data to this dashboard so what we require to do here in the next section we briefly touch on alerts answer the question below what is the highest event id so here if we go back to uh, search take a look at the search history add this to search all the time so now we can save this one right and import to the dashboard but here in the question here we're required to find the highest event id related to the system monitor or system monitor event so here we have to look through system monitor logs and import into the dashboard okay so click on source type source okay i guess we have to uh construct a query ourselves let's find any system monitor events from here or you can take the query directly from here so source uh, but actually i cannot find the source here i don't know why that's the reason source type so we don't have the sys sysmon monitor in the source uh, in the sources here so what we will do we will go to uh, let me copy that the home page if you don't find the sysmon event type you can just add it add data i remember we have added the uh, source but uh, i don't know why it's not showing so i'm gonna add it again go to settings data input local event log collection looking for a sysmon so here we got sysmon save Okay, going now to Splunk Enterprise. Star all the time, search. So as you can see, we have found the Sysmon logs or events. Now, if you want to construct a query, you can just select the source type, add to search, right? As you can see, we have added the uh, data search, but um, I'm going to remove this one because the one required by the question is different, kind of different. So, let me wait for this to finish. okay so clicking on source so PowerShell. yeah this is the one microsoft windows sysmon operational click on that and pipe that to the output top five results limit equal five event id look 
no results is the query correct top limit equal five event id so in my case i cannot find any result so so unfortunately the top five events uh, are not showing when i filter them through the search bar maybe because i have worked on the machine several times and something is messed up but in your case in order to answer the question just type type top limit equal five and event id here once you click that click on save as and you have the dashboard panel click on dashboard panel and select existing then your dashboard once you select that you will be able to go to the dashboard and view the chart and from the chart you will find that the top or the highest event id is 11. okay the alerts the alerts is a feature that is not covered in the enterprise or you cannot use it in the basic inter the basic splunk you need enterprise uh, splunk which is actually the current instance but it is not enrolled in the 60-day trial so alerts are uh, is a feature actually that you can use to uh, monitor for specific events and then trigger an action for example if uh, event id 12 in this monitor is triggered all right you're gonna uh, send an email as a notification to your administrator that an event ID 12 is triggered. You can check the logs, for example. We can, we're gonna check on the alerts um, in the uh, second video of this series. And for now, I'm gonna stop. Uh, there are no questions to answer here, only the conclusion. And of course, we're gonna head to the uh, second part of Splunk. And of course, we, where there will be more challenges to, to tackle. So that's it for today and see you in the next video.